Thanks for joining me. If you've uh, been here before, thanks for returning. If you're new to the channel, please uh, give it a thumbs up, like it, and uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a, a technical field camera made by Horseman. This is the 6x9 technical field camera. It's the VH model, and uh, it's a engineering marvel. It's just such a precision piece of a kit, and it's one of the best technical field cameras you could get right into it look at some of the details of this camera and here's the layout showing you most of the equipment that I would have in my uh, backpack when I go out and up here we have the Pentex spot meter one degree and a gray card and I have a couple lens boards here I'm going to show you later to show you this is a smaller than typical lens board size so it's really hard to use recessed uh, lens boards with it and I'll show you the comparison with the standard uh, Linhop size and my 203 Ektar old classic lens way back I think that thing was made in the 40s but it's very very nice I love it you'll notice I got a big extension tube here these are modular these are actually tubes that can mount various extensions and this fits on this camera and allows me to get more extension with the lens um, if I'm going to use a very long lens or I want to do some close-up work I need a little extra room. The bellows here is quite nice, but uh, for longer lenses, it uh, could use a little help. And the filters that I use, I've kind of standardized on the Coke and P series, the professional, I think that's what it stands for. And uh, for my graduated ND filters and the split NDs and some of the special filters, I, I use this. And this is a little adapter that press fits. It comes up to a 52 millimeter, and then this is a 52 millimeter threaded. So that just mounts on there, and then I can use any of my coking filters. And here's my little uh, Nikkor. It's a 105W. This is my classic lens. I use this all the time. And this has got a 62 millimeter lens on it. And the nice thing about this, it's so compact, it's a wide angle, and I can fold it up and not even have to remove it from the, from the camera. And we have a second ground glass with a metal cover and this represents their roll film backs I have several uh, a couple of six by nines that's what I normally shoot six by nine that's two and a quarter by three and a quarter format also have a six by seven that came with the camera and I hardly ever use that but I do have a couple six by six roll film backs and those are great because I like that format but it's also uh, nice that I have two of them I can compare different film types just to set up the camera, one film on there, shoot it, take off the roll film back, put the other one in, and so then I can compare the different films. And I have a very nice little spirit level, nice and bright. I parked that right on the top of this cold shoe, and uh, that really is very accurate. I like to keep everything just level, and it's really easy to see. And here I have my uh, official Horseman loop, and it has a lanyard attached to it. I use that sometimes, but frequently I'm using this more and more now. The uh, This is a reflex finder. It's got a rotating top on it, so you can shoot vertical and horizontal, and I'll demonstrate that a little later. And this little device here, handy little tool, I can mount, put this on my back here, and then I can attach any of my digital cameras. Well, I have two different, different backs, one for the Canon and one for the uh, Sony. So that really is nice, particularly when we're doing workshops. I can demonstrate the movements pretty well. We can photograph it, shoot a little video, which I'm going to be doing for you uh, in the near future. And that about uh, sums it up, except I normally have uh, my cable release and some filters. But this is uh, the basics of it. And this by no means is all of the accessories. It's just an unlimited, fabulous system. And uh, it's the everything that fits on this BH also fits on the my little uh, Horseman convertible, so it's all interchangeable. Just uh, walk around this camera, see what it looks like. The back, of course, is uh, where we put the film, and this has a really unique uh, feature. This is a spring-loaded ground glass back, and uh, it actually this camera used to take a sheet film. You get sheet film holders and put under here and use it that way. Also, you can just take this off real easily. Just push these down, slide it back, lift it off, and then you can put 
any number of uh, round glass or roll film backs on there. See, now we're going to use the same locks that we had on the roll film backs. It's just, uh, so that's right there. Lock that down and lock that down and we're good to go. Now we have our reflex finder attached. One of the things I really like about this uh, reflex finder, I don't have to use the dark cloth. It's nice and bright. I can focus. It's just a, a dream to use. And if I need to shoot vertical, of course the back rotates. We might just want to rotate like this. We'll lock that in place. But then look at this. Now we're we going to look this way or just rotate this. Now we're in a vertical position and with the reflex finder, everything is the proper orientation. Now the top is at the top and the bottom's at the bottom and it's a really handy tool. And today we're going to be using the 6x9. That's a, my favorite format. And that's going to be held in place by these little sliders here. It's kind of like a graph lock back. Top and bottom. This just slips in place. And there we go. And of course this is uh, 8 exposure. That's uh, 6 by 9. And then let's look at the other side here. This is our dark slide on the roll film back. There's a lock. So you can slide that up to open, down to close. So you can easily uh, uh, load this back without having to take the whole thing off. You can just uh, open this and take the insert out. Might as well show you how to do that. And then you take that out and you could load it up and put it back in place. That's all there is to it. On the side, you'll see these two knobs. There's two on the other side also. And that is to unlock a very unique feature in this camera. And that is the fact that this has a bellows that extends out. We have the one that's going to extend front, but I'm going to demonstrate that in just a moment. But actually, you can get swings and tilts with this particular camera. We see two uh, brackets here. Those are actually for a strap if you want to put a, a hand strap right there. And this, of course, is the Horseman VH. Much more compact, lighter, less expensive than that uh, the rangefinder model. That's why I selected this. It easily fits in the backpack and easy to manage. You notice on the top I have a spirit level. I always use that. It really is something that uh, I wouldn't get by without. It just makes it so, so fast and easy to line up everything. And I'm going to open that in a moment here, but let's keep going around here. On the other side, you can see another bracket for the strap. And there's also a tripod socket hole here if you wanted to use that, but you really don't need to with this particular camera because it has a rotating back. Let's take a look inside here now. Now you'll see there's, you might be able to read it here, it says lock, if it's down, it holds the top in here. Go the opposite direction, and that releases this, it just drops right down, and it'll click right in place. These two locks here make it really very easy to, uh, to manage. Let's take this cap off. One of the other nice features about this camera is that you can actually leave this uh, 65 millimeter lens on here and fold it up. That clamshell construction really makes it compact, very sturdy, and really protects the, the camera and the bellows. Put that out. This will just slide right out. And I'm going to show you these little nubs here, a little close up. But what you do, you uh, these are stops, the infinity mark for individual lenses. I've got the uh, 65, a 105, and a uh, uh, 150. So you can adjust these for whatever focal length lenses you're going to be using. Now we can see those infinity stops. These each have little, little tabs. You can pull them up or place them down. So we'll put them up in, uh, on this last stop here. And then all we have to do is 
these two nubs here we have to hold those together and then slide it out and this will stop automatically where we've selected to do it so let's just do that now let's slide straight out and it will stop right at the right point when you release this this locks very secure so that's how we advance that I'm going to put this uh, focusing knob here show you how that extends and this is a lock right here you can lock it so you can't move these and again this is like rack and pinion this is just precision so smooth and we'll lock that where you want it and then let's uh, we'll take a look at how some of these movements are achieved you're using a wide angle lens what you oftentimes may want to do or you may have to do if you're shooting vertical is to drop the front bed a little bit because if you're shooting vertical the wide angle lens might see the uh, bottom part of here so what you have to do is just release that drops that now you can see the bed is dropped but unless you're using that for your Schleimflug uh, corrections you want to tilt this whole thing back so keep it parallel again and that's pretty easy to do swing the lens back and now it's it's vertical with the film plane and your subject plane now this is geared this is your rise and your fall and it slides sideways you got all your indents here you'll see the uh, the red markers on the side here and then also here so it slides back and forth and there's an indent you can hear it click stops right in place there and it actually will rotate too little lever right here is the lock for that so you release it, it locks pretty good but hold it down then you can swing it this is your swings and you got your tilts going that way and of course it's got the generous rise we've got that the lock is on this side and this is the gear here so very precise it's not just sliding friction but um, gives you an idea of some of the movements on this thing it's really amazing Another movement I use uh, probably more than anything is a forward tilt on the lens. Gives you maximum depth of field. Uh, when you're shooting down on a, a ground area and you want to extend that depth of field, perhaps you have wildflowers and uh, you don't want to stop down all the way. You would like to have a, a little wider f-stop so you could uh, shoot at a faster shutter speed to possibly stop the motion. You'll notice here we have our, our zero indent. That's uh, where everything is neutral but if we want to tilt that lens forward we just loosen this knob and we can just pull this forward there and it goes back and it goes forward too so beautiful feature now the bellows itself is uh, pretty long but I'm going to extend that out and show you a couple tricks here that a way that I've learned to extend that I've got the bellows here extended out pretty much all the way it's a little over nine inches but I can add another three inches here with this cone this is a, a special lens board I think they call it a top hat and you'll see it's modular you can attach different tubes did they just screw together so if you're using really long lenses or you need to have extra bellows extension for some macro work this is a really good way to do it I have the 203 mount on here now but uh, I'm going to probably put my um, uh, 240 I've got a really nice process lens, one that Ansel Adams like to use so much. It's primarily designed for close-up work, but if you stop way down, it works beautifully for distance shots too. So it's an awesome piece of glass. And so this is about a total of 12 inches. That's like 300 millimeter lens, but of course, that's at infinity. So with my 240, I'll have plenty of extra room. But if I need a little extra I'm going to show you how we extend this back. This is brilliant. There's actually one bellows that goes from the front all the way 
back here and then this section extends out a little bit more so let's take a look at that okay the second way we can get a little more bellows extension as i told you we we'll loosen these locks on the back here and then this will extend out it's on these spring-loaded rods and they'll just come out and now you can tilt i use this a lot uh, when i'm doing uh wide angle work primarily when I've got some interesting foreground subject and I want that to become larger. If you tilt this back, things in the foreground will get larger. If you want to do it the opposite way, you can bring the bottom out. This allows you to tilt and also it swings, rocks back and forth. And so these rods are spring loaded and they have little balls on them so you can rock it back and forth. As again, this is one bellows all the way from up here to there. So from a small package, boy, you get a lot of uh, bang for your buck on these. And these things will last a lifetime. These are wonderfully built. To uh, put the lens back in position, these two little knobs, you just push those together and they'll slide straight back all the way in. Got to make sure everything is neutral. Had that up a little bit. It's right in there. I'm going to fold the bed back up. Just hold those down. Push that up. And you lock this by just rotating those down. And that hooks together and you're good to go. As I mentioned, I've had this camera for a number of years and it's served me well. It's really very well built. And if you're looking to step up from a medium format that doesn't have all the movements, I highly recommend this. You have all the fun, the pleasure of working with the movements like a view camera, interchangeable backs, many different types of films available in the 120 format. And you don't have to step up to the large 4x5 and that extra expense and limited uh, emulsions. So I highly recommend this. Hope you uh, pick up one of these. If you have any questions, please uh, drop me a line, uh, make a comment down below, and I look forward to hearing from you.